Hey guys, welcome to Techno Club. Augmented reality. How far has it come? How long is it going to take to be mainstream? Also, our 2017 tech guide. Best of the best. My name is Eben Wilkins. And my name is Maurice John. Welcome to Technoblob. Alright. Yeah, Maurice. So, augmented reality. What is augmented reality? Ah, uh, boy. This is uh, emerging technology that. I believe is one of the next frontiers in our technological leap forward. It's basically blending the real world with computers and the digital world. Yeah, yeah. Um, last year, well, this year actually, mm -hmm. earlier this year, um, Google introduced AR Core. Mm -hmm. But prior to that, they had introduced Tango. Mm -hmm. And many persons are saying that AR Core has basically killed. Tango. <laughs> that, <laughs> that is quite it's, interesting. It's quite interesting, yeah. So what is Tango? Tango mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. augmented reality on phones and mobile devices, but mm -hmm. it's hardware specific, mm -hmm. right? Meaning that you have to have the appropriate hardware on your device to do augmented reality. Mm -hmm. Now, if you, if you look at the, 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 the humble beginnings of t um, Project Tango, um, I believe that Google really saw the potential for Tango um, to enhance its mapping solution. So, one of the concepts that, that surrounded Tango is where they use Google Maps indoors. So, if you go to a museum, you could take out your phone and actually be guided through the halls of a, a, a museum. Mm -hmm. So, that... I believe really sparked the creative juices at Google because all of these projects start from this fringe group, um, Project Moonshot, that they conceptualize something really good and then they go and see, okay, let me try and see if I could get this done. So that I believe I'm, I'm out of Project Moonshot came Project Tango with the real idea that if we could make users have a more deeper um, um, view into the world using their smartphones. So you go to the mall, you want to find out where is the Gucci store or whatever store, you could take up your phone and virtually map out the indoor because the, 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 the camera stack could actually sense the depth and be able to give precise measurements indoor because Google Ma has mastered maps, outdoor maps. Yeah. <laughs> so that is where Project Tango really got its, its, its bought into the world. Yeah. And Project Tango is very limited on mobile phones. Actually, only on two phones since exactly. its release in 2014. It's awesome. probably still on beta. Mm -hmm. And um, the two phones are the, what do you call them? The Lenovo Fab 2 mm -hmm. and the Asus Zen phone. Exactly. Right? Those are the only two phones Tango is on. And I believe that, that, that in itself became the downfall of Tango mm -hmm. because it required <laughs> special hardware to be able to accomplish what they, their goals were. Mm -hmm. So if you had a case where, ma and that is one of the, the, the advantages of Google, they had mass adoption. Mm -hmm. So they had so many devices running Android, but to introduce a new technology into the market, they required an additional piece of hardware. And um, Android mm -hmm. is known for being the cheaper alternative. Right. So these phones came out and they were more expensive, so the mass adoption was just not there. So when we look at these, the Lenovo and the Asus phone, they were, they were more, more expensive. They did not look good. Because if you look at the camera module at the back, and we'll show it on screen. Yeah, big the, bump. It was a huge camera bump on the back. Mm -hmm. So it was not attractive. So, and that is one thing that I think Google has not figured out, that for, to, to achieve mass adoption, the device must be attractive, not just functional. I believe that they are stuck in the mindset of functionality over pretty. Yeah. That's where Apple gets it right. Mm -hmm. Apple had a camera bump, but they made it into this 
big they own the bomb right. apparently so even they had a camera bomb nobody could have complained because it looked like fine jewelry that, that's how they approach their design their, their, their design yeah and sadly to say that mm -hmm. project tango google has recently announced that project tango is going to be closing or shutting down on march 2018 okay and it will be replaced by aaco which we'll be talking about in a few minutes from now guys thank you for sticking around with us and now we're going to be diving into AR Core. Now what really sparked AR Core, the introduction of AR Core really saw the introduction into the market because of what Apple did. When Apple had WD yeah. WWDC they introduced a framework that does basically the same things that Project Tango did but with a regular camera. Yeah. So the, what AR Core mm -hmm. was a jerk reaction to Apple's AR Toolkit. Yes. The response that Apple got from their um, conference, WWD conference, was just outstanding. And they saw what they could have done if they had introduced AR Core sooner. Exactly. Or probably not on specific hardware. Because although, well, we can't really say Apple's AR is on. It's not, it's not specific Ampa. because it's, <laughs> it's only one phone. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right? So mm. everything is specific mm. to Apple. Exactly. But with, with Google, it's, it's different, you know? Exactly. Everybody produces different yeah, phones, phones using different um, components. Exactly. So they have to make it more compelling. And I think that's where AR Core really shines. It uses basic, well, not completely basic, basic, basic but, but, you know. You have, you have as long as you have the... the, the a good camera, yeah, a, good, yeah. a good processor to push it. You're gonna be good. You're gonna be good. Mm -hmm. But one of one of the things that really took the world by storm was Apple brought out this AR platform, and as soon as Apple brought out AR platform, we saw a tremendous uptick of the different examples of what AR could do. And if for those who are watching, I might not understand the the, the jargon uh, augmented reality, but picture this: um, you are you want to measure your house. What will what you will regularly do is you will go for measuring tape, and you'll measure that house. But with augmented reality now, you could take your phone, point it to a spot in the room, and anchor the point there, and actually measure how the distance um, to mm -hmm. the next wall. Mm -hmm. So it allows for depth sense. It allows us to see all of the things. Now, now this is Christmas. You are doing Christmas shopping. Imagine, and this is actually on the market right now. Yeah. Quotes, if and I, I believe in the future, quotes will implement this. I think quotes is our Caribbean IKEA. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So you want to know because my let me give my let me give an example of my mother. My mother, she wants to she, she got a new couch for for, for <coughs> Christmas, mm -hmm. and she cleared out her, her living room, and she was waiting on the couch. Now, she could have taken up her phone download a quotes app and virtually put the couch in the room and see if it fits how it looks before she went to quotes and buy it yeah. that is what augmented reality allows us to do another thing you want to buy a dress or a shirt or a pants you could stand in front of someone mm -hmm. they take out their phone and they fit the clothes on yeah. top of you because it could sense the depth it could sense how wide your shoulders yeah. are that is where augmented reality is heading mm -hmm. in the future. Yeah. And to push it even further, mm. um, let's say you're, it's this time in Christmas and you're ready to paint your room. Exactly. Use your phone, 
and you phone will tell you how much gallons of paint you need to paint your room. Exactly. Yeah. And it could show you how your room would look with the, color. With the paint. Yeah. And it's not it's not a case where you're going to see the difference. You're actually going to point your phone and it's going to stay on the wall even though you're moving it across the, 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 the walls. Which is cool. So that's cool. The applications are endless when mm -hmm. it comes to these things. When it comes to children doing their science projects. They want to build a model room, um, a model rocket. We have seen examples of where people take use um, launching rockets from their pool because the, the 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 phone camera could detect the the surface of the water and could actually show the rocket taking off. Yeah. Um. They try it with the with 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 with, with the guy Elon Musk's um um company where you show how the the rockets would would re, um re-enter the atmosphere. It's so great a platform and it has so much implications for us today in mm -hmm. St. Vincent and all across the world. Mm -hmm. So ARCO, a lot of people in St. Vincent, they use Android. So Android will be our gateway into this new platform. Yeah. So in the next two years, I expect this to be in St. Vincent and people, hopefully companies in St. Vincent will take advantage of it. Let's hope. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we're going to take a short break again. And we'll be back shortly. We'll let's discuss Apple's take on Iaco. Yeah. Welcome back, guys. So in this segment, we're going to be talking about Apple's AR toolkit. All right. So how does the Apple AR toolkit works? Well, it uses a true depth camera. It detects shadows and light, and it uses AI technology to analyze all those information and compile it and make sense out of it. Yeah, so if we if we look at how we perceive our surroundings, we will know something when, when light is in the room and we see a shadow. So if there's a bag in the room and light is shining on it and there's no shadow, we don't think it's real. Mm -hmm. So with, with, with what Apple and Google are doing is taking those same physical concepts Right now, our computer is on the desk and it's casting a shadow from the light. How do I now take that and put it digitally so that people will look at it and think, this is real, yeah. because of the light <coughs> that is being cast. So what Apple did, and, I, and you know I'm an Apple guy, <laughs> Apple, because of their tight control over their technology, they could decide we are doing augmented reality. And so much people come on board. Because from iOS 11, you now see that iPhone 6 can do it, the iPhone 6S, the 7, the 8, and the X. So you have a wide range of devices that could jump right into augmented reality. Mm -hmm. And the most important part of any platform is if developers could see that it makes sense financially so that they could jump into it. So, quotes... If Quotes is going to do an app that they, they will sell more furniture, they will sell more curtains and all of these things because people could see. You could take down, and everybody know, we all have incentive, we know, we tear down the house, we take out everything out of the house, and then we start to rebuild and reconstruct. If we could walk around, call my sister too, my sister said, well, she fed up of this bland color. She wants a color that is different from white. You know, everybody in St. Vincent, they have the one color all across the house and so. <laughs> she wanted her home in pink. <laughs> now, if she wanted to decide what color pink, mm -hmm. she could just take her phone and decide if she wants to use Corey's mm -hmm. to buy paint. Corey's could have a, app, a paint app. So you take it up and you put it on your, 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 your wall and you say, okay, I don't like this color. I don't like this color until you mix and match and you see that color. So, the advantage of Apple yeah in your in your in your in your eyes yeah the the advantages of apple and not only apple but ai in general um there are a few couple advantage uses for it uh we touched on shopping mm -hmm. and i want to mention sports as well mm -hmm. um just imagine you on the you're watching cricket no you're on the high stand you can't really see what's going on you can't mm -hmm. see the scoreboard properly you don't know how much runs the two guys in front have take out your phone whoop all the information pops up. You know each player, you know how much runs, you could click and check their stats that right was, there on the go. 
that was a huge wow, yeah when Apple showed that, that was where it. you could go to a, a a sports game, and the camera could use artificial intelligence to detect okay, this is LeBron or this is Chris Gale, and you could show them your averages, You're right? How much your score is in the game? That is crazy. Yep. That is crazy. So imagine mm-hmm. that happening in our Caribbean context. Yeah. And not only that, look at the dashboard. You're in a vehicle. You're traveling. Put augmented reality in that windscreen. You get to see how fast you're going, direction you want to go. Um, if cops nearby. <laughs> You think about it, and it's all exactly. on your screen. You don't have to look down or look anywhere. Just look straight in front of you. Exactly. That'd so, be cool. So if you put a, 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 one of these cameras inside of your vehicle, now if you are a new driver, you could actually start sensing, okay, I am one, um, a few inches away from the drain, or I am 15 feet from the vehicle in front, and you could actually have precise calculations as to where you are going. Now, of course, that will go to self-driving cars and all of these things. But, you know, these are where, that's where augmented reality um, interacting with our live space is going. And we should get excited. We should really do some research. Make sure that we are uh, in front of the curve. So I'm appealing to Vincentian businesses, um, developers in the country, all of this, this, this community, we need to start doing the research so that we could equip ourselves to be a part of and not looking back on the technology that is available in, in the world today. Yeah. Yeah. So that wraps up another segment. That wraps um, up augmented reality. Yeah, augmented yeah. reality. So <laughs> when we come back, we're going to be talking about Christmas and buying. Yeah. Yes. Stay tuned. All right, we're back and we're here at that sweet Christmas buying guide. So we're going to be looking at a few categories and seeing, okay, what is the, what is the best in that category? And we might also offer some budget-friendly options. So, Eben, for this year, what is the best phone out there you say that somebody could buy? I, sh- I wish Microsoft had <laughs> I knew. I knew it. I knew oh, it. I, I wish a Windows phone came out this year. Oh, but, but, but sadly, no, okay, there's no Windows phone to talk about. <laughs> Windows, is, Windows phone is dead right now. <laughs> right, but, I mean, I, I got to admit, the iPhone X is pretty sweet. Mm-hmm. But I won't pick the iPhone X. Okay. I'd actually go with the Google Pixel. The Google Pixel. Yeah, man. Excel or the regular? Uh, got the regular. the regular. The regular is big enough already. The XL is a little bit too big. You know, okay. it's huge. Okay. Yeah. So we have the the Google the Google Pixel. Um, mm-hmm. Of course, it's a really good phone. My brother actually got the Google Pixel he did? XL. He did. Wow. More than the kind of, <laughs> kind of money I was spending on that phone. I'm like, Jesus. Oh man. That's house lot and everything in between. Mm. So we we run that later. I, I uh, he actually wants to come on the program to to All give right. his take. So right. we'll have his take. That's a, cool. A regular consumer giving his review would be awesome. All right. But he picks eyes the camera. Mm-hmm. It's really, really good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the tail between the Pixel and the iPhone is really interesting. The Pixel uses all software, mm-hmm. while the iPhone X uses all hardware. Exactly. It's pretty interesting. It's quite, quite, quite interesting. <laughs> so we are seeing in the phone category where Google is going and where Apple is going. Apple is very good at hardware. Google is very good at software. So what Google, uh, Apple is doing with two cameras, Google is doing with one. Mm-hmm. So right now, is a toss-up between the iPhone X and the XL. Yeah. Budget now, if you're looking for a budget phone around 500 US dollars, I would advise to get an essential phone. Jeez, budget is now 500 dollars? 500 dollars wow. is budget. <laughs> <laughs> 500 is budget. <laughs> There's a budget market right now. <laughs> or you could get the, um, oh, the OnePlus the one, 5. The OnePlus one is plus nice. 5G, the OnePlus is really nice. Which is 5 on yeah. mm-hmm. All right. So, what is our next category? Um, well, I guess we could go into laptops. Laptops. All mm-hmm. right. Now, you know, is is Windows. Yeah. You'll finally get a little <laughs> chuck in there. Of course. So, <laughs> <laughs> so tell me, which Windows? Which All Windows right. Even? So, for, for premium, I would go with, um, the, I like the Dell XPS series. Mm-hmm. It's really good, 15 specifically. Mm-hmm. And the 13 is actually nice as well. It, it, call, it has the, what's called the infinite, display. infinity d- display. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which is really thin bezels. That's really nice. 
Um, yeah, but I would go with the Dell XPS 15. Okay. Mm -hmm. So no Surface? Nah, no Surface. No Surface, no surface no. too? I, I think I'll get more for my buck with the Dell XPS. Okay. Yeah. But, it, it, mm -hmm. but if, if... That is true. <coughs> the, the Dell XPS is actually coming in at, at around, I think, $7.99. Mm -hmm. To touch a Surface, you had to go. A Surface book and so it's going to be quite expensive mm -hmm. to get a quality Surface. But I love the Surface. Yeah, the Surface is nice. I'm not a Windows guy, but when I see the Surface, I get like an envious side. <laughs> I look in real nice. But, you know, I'm a Mac yeah. person. If you want a good computer to last a good four or five years, mm -hmm. you can't go wrong with a MacBook. Um, mm -hmm. So anyone, just pick one. If you want a yeah. slim one, if you want a middle range, you want a high end, yeah. you know, pick one, and it will guarantee last you for a good four to five years. Yeah. So let's let's start budget. Budget laptops. Can you imagine the budget laptop is actually cheaper than a <laughs> a budget phone? Exactly. It's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So if you want a budget laptop, what you would recommend? Um, there, there, there's so much budget laptops right now. Um, I'm using one right now. This is the the Asus Flip. Um, you, you could get, well, this is a 2050 model. You could probably get one right now between $200 and $300. Exactly. So. Yeah, there's, there's so much option. Plus, you can't go wrong with a Chromebook either. So. Oh, yeah. So is either Chromebooks are there. So One of one of the cheaper, because right now, Windows is actually catering to the, um, the <coughs> sub $200 range. So, Ebenders being the, it be with me just touching the screen, moving stuff. I'm like, right. oh, oh, yeah, yeah. My, my flips, it has a touch screen, everything. And that's yeah. between a $300 range. Yeah, exactly. So, so you're good, man. I, I, I had no complaints. I had no complaints. He could flip his screen, he could touch the screen, all of that. He do his thing. You see, he's showing off on the people on the screen with flip off and all kind of thing there. So I, I can't touch my screen, but I'm happy still. Mm -hmm. But um, I will suggest if you want to buy a laptop and you on a budget, get a Chromebook. That's what I want to leave with you. Get a Chromebook. Today, <coughs> everybody is just using um, their browser to do everything. If you don't have internet, you don't have a life on the computer right now. So Chrome OS is just a Chrome browser. You want to do Netflix. You want to watch your shows online. Um, they allows you to. They have. Um, they have. You could run Android apps on the Chromebooks now, so you have access to a, a, um, over a million apps on on Chrome OS, and it they normally come around two hundred to three hundred dollars. Yeah. So you buy that little computer, check out a Chromebook, give it a try, pop us a message, and see if that is what you would like. Yeah. So that is another episode. All right. Um. So, how do we find VC Three? Right, so you can find VC3, they're on channel 114, yeah, they're on channel 114, they're also on YouTube, you could look for VC3 TV, you can also find them on Facebook, VC3 TV. Alright, so the URL for, the, for, for VC3 on Facebook is facebook.com slash VC Culture Connection Channel, yeah. all together. Yeah. And of course, you could find Technoblob on Facebook also, technoblob, facebook.com slash technoblob. You could find us on YouTube, you know, keep yeah. watching. We have great things in store for you for um, next year and also for the rest of the year. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Rich John. And I'm Eben Wilkins. And that's another episode.